With the cost of buying bees going through the roof, one great alternative is trapping your bees. Not only can trapping save you hundreds of dollars over buying bees, it's actually a lot of fun. I feel like it combines uh, a little bit of hunting and fishing and beekeeping all together. It's, it's kind of a, a fun, unique side niche of beekeeping. So there are three important parts to swarm trapping. Your trap design, what goes into that design, your placement of your trap, and then finally what to do once you get a swarm. We're gonna look at all three of those. First, we'll take a look at your actual swarm trap setup. There are many people that, because it's so convenient, they'll just use a five frame nuke box. Whether they have a wood box or a disposable nuke box that they got from buying a nuke once upon a time, they'll throw that up in a tree and hope for the best. While a swarm could move into this, and some of those people have caught swarms before, swarms are known to move into small locations sometimes. But there's been a lot of research done on what swarms actually are looking for. The ideal locations and in this case, volume of a home site that swarms are looking for. In this video, I'm gonna talk about these research-based tips to catching more swarms. And the first one is, this is not enough space. A lot of what we know about swarm trapping and, and the behavior of swarms comes from Dr. Thomas Seeley. He's written some great books, Honeybee Democracy, as well as more recently, The Lives of Bees. These books outline his research and his findings, specifically in the areas of honeybees living in natural home sites and how they look for new home sites. And one thing he found is that bees do not want this volume. Will they settle for it? Might you catch a swarm? Maybe, but what they're looking for is actually twice this volume. Honeybees are naturally looking for, based on his studies and the natural colonies he's found, over 40 volume, 40 liters in volume. This is only about 22. So what do we do to get a proper sized swarm trap? Well, you could build your own swarm traps, but I'm gonna show you a couple ways you can use the equipment you have to meet this ideal size of over 40 liters. And one is simply, as you see here, double five ring new boxes. These are deep nuke boxes, five frame. I don't have them all in there, but you can simply use the equipment you have. Get two nuke boxes. We'll talk about the inside in a minute, but stack them up and attach them somehow. Lots of options. And you'll also need a bottom. You can do a solid board on the bottom, and then we'll have to talk about the entrance. Or you can even use your bottom board. In this case, this one's screened. You'll want to put an insert in there to close this off or use a solid bottom board. But what we have here is, you might have used this before in the bee yard. We called it a five over five or a, a double five frame nuke box setup. And we'll want a lid. And as far as volume, we're at about 44 liters here and bees like this. This is, this is very acceptable for what they're looking for. So this is the ideal size, around this 42 to 45 liter size, maybe slightly larger, but we have to find a way to connect all this together. Obviously, if we're gonna be hanging this up in a tree, there are staples that you can, you can purchase that will hold these boxes together. They're large copper staples. Putting them at an angle like this, opposite to each other keeps the boxes from shifting. If you put them straight up and down, there can be some shifting of these boxes. But this, these staples can hold the bottom as well as the top all together so your swarm trap is one unit. Now you will need to eventually access the inside of this if your bees, your new bees, your swarm, draw comb down there so you'll have to be able to pry these open. There are other methods as well. You could get little metal brackets and screw them to both sides. You get a piece of wood and screw it into the various sections. You can even use the beekeeper's best friend strap clamps and strap clamp this together. You need it to be secure though because remember right now it's just a bunch of empty boxes. Eventually, it will be full of bees. And the longer you leave them, the more brood and honey and weight they're gonna have. So we want this to be very secure. Another option would be to do the same thing we just did here, but with a 10 frame deep box. A 10 frame deep box 
put your bottom board and your, your cover on, and you're looking at about 42 liters. Again, this is right in the range that honeybees are looking for, makes a great trap. That will save you from having to build specialized equipment for your trapping. Just use your old equipment, and if it's had bees in it before, it's even better. That has the scent of bees, the pheromones in there, and it'll increase your chances. So use your old equipment, use what you have, and I would say, even if you don't have equipment and you're gonna buy, I would buy equipment I can use in the future instead of specifically a swarm trap. Now let's talk about setting up the inside. We talked about volume. You can also buy specific swarm traps. One common one is a big round basket looking papery material swarm trap that you put on a tree. Can you catch bees in it? Yes. The problem with that is once a swarm moves in, you're gonna have them build comb in there that you're gonna to have to cut out and try to put into frames. You're gonna have a lot of extra work, a lot of effort that goes into that, moving that comb. What I like to do is make it as simple as possible. So let's look at the inside. Honeybees want space, so we're gonna leave some open space in there, but we also wanna guide them. So how do we do this? There's a couple ways. Leave the bottom box empty or get frames and make a starter strip. Whether you're using wax foundation or plastic foundation, you can make a starter strip in here and fill this bot. You could leave it empty. There's a small risk that they'll build comb down here without any guidance and you'll have a bit of a mess. Might be worth taking that risk, but you can also, like I said, frames with a starter strip, fill this box up. What that'll do is it'll leave the rest of this space open and the bees will detect that as open space and that's, that's a good home site for them. Now let's look at the top box. The top box, what I like to do is include one frame of old brood comb. It's brown, it's dark, it's been used for many generations of raising bees and this brood comb contains lots of scents and pheromones that'll help draw the bees in. And also it gives a place for your queen to immediately, your new queen to immediately start laying. Once she has eggs in there and larvae in there, this swarm is way more likely to stay put in this swarm trap. That's why I love putting in a frame of dark comb. The rest of the box I would fill with frames. I would do foundation. These don't have any foundation right now. You could do a starter strip. That's up to you. I like wax, uh, plastic foundation rather, and I would put four with plastic foundation. What you'll get is, you'll get a lot of work out of these swarms. You know swarms are ready to draw wax. So one frame for them to, to draw them in. Think about bees out there going along a tree line, just looking for a, a tree hollow to move into. What you're providing here is the right space, the right scent, they're, they're looking for old home sites that would be a good, good opportunity for them to move into. So that's where that comes in. And I like to have four frames ready for them to draw. Plastic foundation coated in wax. Some don't like plastic foundation, wax foundation. You can do starter strips, that's up to you. But I would provide, regardless of what you do in the bottom, I would provide guidance for this top box. This is where hopefully they'll move into and get started right away. In addition to the frames inside and the old comb, we like to use an attractant. And the attractant we like to use, actually we developed this based on the research that's been done on Nasinov pheromone and the compounds in Nasinov pheromone. And we like to say that swarm trapping is not luck, it's science. And so we based our swarm lure on the science of Nasinov pheromone. And so we have several of the compounds that are found in that pheromone in this spray bottle. You can use this as part of your swarm trapping and you'll greatly increase your chances, not just chances, hopefully the number of swarms you get because you can catch a swarm, pull it out, put the same trap back up and, and continue to get more swarms in that trap. And an attractant, a good quality attractant, really, really does help. Those bees are out there searching the trunks of trees, looking for a home site, and this will really help entice them to your traps. So that's Swarm Science, I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to try that out. Now let's talk about the entrance. The size should be between one and a half and two and a half square inches. So you can do the math. The entrance here is different on different 
uh, setups. But you can do the math. Figure this out. If, it, if this is more space on yours than you need, then put an entrance reducer part, part way across there, a little block of wood, something to reduce it down to get it in that range. Why that range? If it's too large, the bees look at that as being a danger because they can't defend it as well. Maybe it'll let more weather and cool air in as well. If it's too small, the bees can't go in and out as easily as they need to. And that hole can be drilled, can be cut, or like I said, you can use the natural entrance. If you do use a solid board on the bottom and have to drill an entrance, you can also use an, an entrance disc like this. And this particular one, I measured this entrance at 1.75 inches across, which gives us about two and a half inches of entrance space. But the advantage of this is once you have that swarm, you can simply turn it to the ventilation holes. The bees can't escape and you have airflow still in your, in your trap so you can transport it. So these are, these are handy. I'll put a link also to where you can buy some of these at a great price.